What's up nerds, I'm the Roleplay Gamer and I like to party. Welcome to another Fallout 4 Roleplay build. Today we're taking a look at the synth, or the runaway synth, if you like. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. The concept of a synth build has been marinating in my brainium for quite some time now. It's just a little bit difficult to slap together, because being a synth doesn't necessarily imply any specific skills. Synths can, in theory, do whatever they want, so how the hell do you build a synth? Well, this is my take on it. Firstly, the premise, as the name suggests, is that this particular synth, Rachel, is a runaway. Perhaps she's a prototype like Nick Valentine, or maybe she's exceeded her programming and has decided she no longer wants to be a puppet of the Institute. So she's stolen some sort of flying vehicle, hence the flight helmet, and has escaped and is now actively hiding from the Institute. As for how she got her Pip-Boy, shortly after her escape, she came across the sole survivor. In exchange for some Institute weapons that she swiped before her escape, she received the sole survivor's Pip-Boy, as well as some information regarding the sole survivor's identity and quest, so that she can hopefully use it to protect herself in the future. Taking a look at attributes now, and we're starting off with three strength. It was a bit of a toss up between a focus on strength or endurance, but ultimately I decided a synth is perhaps more durable than they are strong. Next we've got seven perception. With those fancy scanning mechanical eyes, Rachel the synth can of course see many things. Next, we've got Seven Endurance to portray her strong, synthetic frame. One Charisma shows that at best, Rachel is not knowledgeable when it comes to socializing with humans. And at worst, if they actually find out she's a synth, well, no one's going to want to talk to her then either. Next up, she's got Three Intellect. This shows that she's got a basic understanding of mechanics, which allows her to not only maintain her own mechanical body, but also construct basic weaponry. Six Agility is going to aid in her new on-the-run lifestyle. And finally, No Points in Luck is going to aid in Sweet FA. We're looking at a level 30 build here. And first up in the Perception line, we've got three points in the Refractor perk. This is going to give us some savage energy resistance. Now for endurance, and as the synth is quite literally made out of metal, or perhaps adamantium if you like, we're going to be putting three points into toughness, two into lead belly because her insides have been conditioned to process radiation filled food and drink, three points in life giver, one point in chem resistant which will later be upgraded to two points, one point in aqua girl because it stands to reason that if she's rad resistant on dry land she should be rad resistant underwater as well. Three points in rad resistant and two points in adamantium skeleton. In the intelligence line we're going to be putting three points into gun nut to help her upgrade and maintain her sidearm. Finally, agility is where the fun begins. We're going to be putting five points into Gunslinger, as Rachel will mainly be using pistols. Two points in Action Girl, and two points in Moving Target, to promote her hit and run, that's heavy style of play. And speaking of play style, we're going to be sprinting from place to place, from vantage point to vantage point, under the protection of the Moving Target perk. Using the increased action point regeneration of Action Girl, we're going to be using a lot of VATs to take headshots and shoot the legs of anyone trying to bum rush us. In terms of healing ourselves, I am a little bit disappointed that our only option is stim packs and food. While you can explain that away by saying synths are cyborgs or cybernetic in nature, it just it doesn't feel right to me. But of course, Fallout 4 isn't a very good RPG, so it doesn't give us very many options. Oh, look at me. Aren't I a savagely cool hipster? I'm dissing the RPG elements of Fallout 4. How original. Seriously, though, it really does suck. Looking at equipment now, and I've decided to give you a few options here. 
When it comes to combat and the early game, I like the idea of wearing a synth uniform and light synth armor with a flight helmet. The reason for the flight helmet is twofold. Firstly, as I said, we can explain it by saying she hijacks some sort of flying vehicle in order to escape from the Institute. And secondly, the open front section of the helmet humanizes her a little bit as opposed to wearing a synth field helmet, for example, which while looking badass does make her look a little bit more robotic. Now, as she is on the run from the Institute, she's probably not going to want to dress like a synth for very long or very often. So Dr. RPG will also be prescribing a red leather trench coat or similar item of clothing. Depending how you want to roleplay it, you could also get away with wearing a Corsair uniform. Either Rachel is an ex-Corsa herself, or she stole the uniform upon her escape. When it comes to weaponry, as I stated earlier, Rachel has traded away her Institute rifle. Now she uses conventional pistols to defend herself. My preference is for a fully upgraded 10mm pistol, but you can use whatever tickles your fancy. When it comes to what we'll actually be doing in the Commonwealth, you'll of course want to avoid any contact with the Institute at all costs, as well as any anti-synth groups like the Brotherhood of Steel. Alternatively, if you would like to roleplay a braver synth, perhaps you could actually infiltrate the Brotherhood of Steel. Not with any malicious intent in mind, but rather to hide in plain sight. In terms of actual quests and factions, the Railroad would be a perfect candidate for Rachel the Runaway Synth. Venturing to Far Harbor and seeking refuge at Acadia would also be a splendid course of action. You say the word. Companions is a little bit of a tricky one here. Your first instinct may be to choose a robot or synth companion, but I feel that if you're trying to convince people of your humanity, you probably want to spend most of your time with other humans. So this rules out Codsworth, Nick Valentine, and Curie. So who have we got left? Well, Deacon seems like an obvious choice if you're going to follow the railroad quest line. Alternatively, as much as I'm not her biggest fan, I feel like Piper is a good fit for this character. She hates the Institute possibly as much as Rachel does herself, so she's going to be a good ally when it comes to both avoiding them and possibly lashing out against them. And finally, the HUD color I used in this video can be reproduced using the slider settings currently on screen. That's everything. It's going to take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is going to give Diamond City plenty to talk about. And that, as they say, is all she wrote. As always, I do name these builds after appropriate or relevant characters from literature, film, and TV. Let me know in the comments if you know what Rachel is a reference to. Don't forget to gently caress that like button. It needs love like everything does. Also, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, sharing it really does help. Maybe we can replicate the success of past roleplay builds. Taste the game, be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time. Roleplay Gamer, out.